Good morning to you. I'm Evangelist Laverne Brown, and I welcome you to the Greet God Monday Morning Devotions. And uh, today we're going to be in the book of Acts, chapter number 16. And the devotion is entitled, Your Assignment is More Important Than Your Pain. I know that you're probably like, oh, no, there's nothing more important than my pain. But nonetheless, there's purpose in our pain. I know that many of us have heard that. And in this particular scripture, Paul and uh, is in a certain place. And he is on assignment, of course. And when he gets there, he selects a mentor by the name of Timothy, who was a child of a Jewish believer, who was a widow, and his father was a Greek. And he wanted him to assist him and go with him on the um uh, on his next mission. And for some reason, Timothy was not circumcised when he was young. Now, according to the Jewish faith, the children, the males had to be circumcised on the eighth day. And of course, for some reason, I don't know why it was missed, but he was not circumcised. And the Jews in that community were um, disgruntled because he was not circumcised and they did not want him going on the mission trip with them. And so it caused a lot of pressure and it caused a lot of conflict. And so here's Timothy faced with this rejection, uh, not only because of his uh, lack of circumcision, but because he was, he had a mixed heritage. In other words, he was Greek and he was Jew. And so, um, in order to conform to their way of life and to avoid conflict, Paul agreed to circumcise Timothy. Now, I know Timothy might have questioned it. He might have objected, and he, but eventually he endured the pain of the procedure to follow through on his calling, and he later on became a prominent pastor for his generation under Paul's uh, mentorship. And it goes along with that scripture where Paul says, become all things to all men. And one of the things that I thought about when I um, was reading this is that sometimes you just have to go along with things in order to get your foot in the door and to be able to move in ministry. And I know that there's many instances where individuals have been rejected because they weren't baptized a certain way, been rejected because of the way that they look on the outside, just been rejected because of their culture and they are what do you call that? Uh, misjudged uh, a lot. It's a lot of misjudgment and uh, going on in this world today. And so sometimes we just have to go along with it in order to be able to fulfill our uh, mission. So Timothy went on and went through the procedure and they began to pass through the cities and they were preaching the gospels, gospel and um, establishing the churches because the people were grabbing a hold to faith and they wanted to make sure that there was no interference in uh, being able to establish the faith in the cities that they had already been through. And the providence of God would have it because they wanted to go to a certain place. And it says that the providence of God was against them. And don't you know, sometimes God is against you going to a certain place. And I thought to myself, I said, well, you know what? Usually we get headstrong and we say, oh, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go there. I'm going to minister here. I'm going to minister there. And then you find out that no matter what you do, you can't get your foot in the door. Something always comes up. Something is going on. And of course, we always blame it on the devil. But sometimes it's God because God can be against you going to a certain place. And it said that the spirit of the Lord prevented them from going to that region. And he also prevented them from going to Bithynia. And they had to sail on by Messiah and they finally came to Troas. And while they were there, Paul had a prophetic vision, which led to his next assignment. And I'm of the opinion that when we are following the prophetic, then we cannot miss and we will not find ourselves out of the will of God. And so with this prophetic vision, we have to understand that God requires for us to be obedient immediately because it says that when Paul saw the vision, he saw a man saying, come 
to Macedonia and help us. He was saying, get here and help us. And so when it says get here, that means that these individuals are dealing with something that only you have the anointing to deal with. And there's other things that are going to come to pass as a result of him being obedient. And so the individuals could not handle it by themselves. And we need someone with anointing to destroy what is threatening us. Now, this was an emergency. This was an urgency. A crisis apparently was in progress. And when they got to the place of assignment, the first thing that they did, they prayed. They went into the city and they prayed. They went down by the riverside, not to the beach. They went by the rivers. I'm not saying that your assignment is not at the beach, but what I'm saying is that we need to know exactly where we need to be and what we, where we need to go when we go into particular cities or when we go in to minister. The purpose of for being there was not recreational. And it said that they sat down and spake to the women. And I'm like, kind of like, where are the men? I'm not going to get on that subject. But nonetheless, they mentioned a lady by the name of Lydia who was a seller of purple. She was a businesswoman. And she was attentive to the word and she provided for them. And of course, they must have continued to go to prayer each morning or whatever time they had set to go to prayer. And so prayer must proceed. Uh, the assignment as well. So we get the prophetic vision, we, be, we get to the place and we pray. And while they were on their way to prayer one day, there was this young girl that a damsel, they called her, that was uh, demon possessed. She was possessed and she continued to say the same thing over and over again and continuing to flatter, continuing to say, oh, these are the men of the most high God. These are great men and just boasting but the the truth of the matter was she was just really flattering them so that she wouldn't be exposed that spirit in her was just flattering so that she wouldn't be exposed it's just like if you go down to a um a, a place that's ridden with uh sex trafficking and you're down there ministering and then there's a young girl there and she's just flattering you and you know talking about the Lord and saying this and just lifting you up and please believe me her masters are close by and so you know it could be what you call a a trick and so we have to understand that when we go into places that uh, I call them the sly the slick and the wicked are always there and so what they did, the masters did, they set Paul and Silas up and drew them out of the uh, markets. First of all, they cast that demon out of the young girl. And, and then that ended their income. You know, people can really get upset when you uh, mess with their income. So <laughs> we have to know that as we go along in ministry and individuals are being delivered, there's going to be, if someone is using them for income or someone is using them for whatever, that person is going to get mad. That person is going to get upset. That person is going to start acting out. And so what they did, they took Paul and um, Timothy to the, uh, Paul and Silas rather, uh, they drew them out and uh, took them to the, the uh, magistrates to be judged for that. Now, where Timothy was, I'm not sure, but Timothy was going through all of this with them. And so what we have to understand is that um, when we begin to preach the gospel and lives are changed and lives are transformed and people are coming out of their wicked lifestyles, you know, people can accept any other kind of, of uh, philosophy. They could accept, I mean, anything. We have so many different philosophies going on in this world, but when it comes down to the gospel, the gospel is not intolerable to the world. It's just, you know why? Because it, it takes for a person to truly be transformed, for them to be born again, for them to have a divine experience with God. And they know that they know that they know. And then you know as well that that person has been changed. So they got in trouble because they cast out a devil. They got in trouble because they somebody's life changed for the good 
And so here we find that them, you know, the dynamic duel is what I call them, beaten and cast into the deepest prison. They're in the dungeon. A dungeon is a dark, uh, often underground room or cell in a castle, prison, or other fortified structure that is used for confinement or punishment. So they're deep into the prison. They were cramped. They were uncomfortable. Uh, they didn't have any furniture. Um, they didn't have any amenities. They didn't have, you know, the, the, the weight room is down there. The uh, cafe is down there. And uh, all of this, they didn't have all of these amenities. The pool was outside. No, they didn't have none of that. They, they were in a dungeon. And um, it doesn't tell us that uh, anything concerning um, what may have preceded this, but it's dark in there. And they began, Paul and Silas began to praise the Lord, determined to maintain their sanity or deciding to praise God instead of drowning into deep depression because sometimes we go through that if we are so excited about preaching the gospel and ministering and then all of a sudden you're faced with this opposition and it can throw you into depression but instead of them going into depression they begin to praise the Lord and that's one thing that the Lord says that if someone mistreats you if you go into a city or you go going to minister to somebody and they mistreat you or they don't accept you what did he say? Just shake the dust off your feet and just keep on moving. Don't allow it to accumulate on you because then you're going to go into depression and then you're going to say, oh, well, my gift or what I'm doing is not acceptable. But there's somebody that will accept that gift and there's somebody that's waiting on you. And so we found that when they begin to praise the Lord, there were uh, all of the prisoners got loose. There was an earthquake in the prison. And all of the prisoners got loose. So you have to understand the power of your gifting. You have to understand that. And pain comes along with it because I'm, you know, they beat them and they were bloody and they were uh, nailed to the wall and and, and things of that nature. Uh, and so the prisoners got loose, and the jailer came and he began. He was getting ready to kill himself because he, he was the one that was responsible for them being there. You know, he had to, he was the, the, the watcher. He was the security, if you would, if you would, for a better word. And um, so Paul said, don't harm yourself. We're all here. Nobody left out of the prison. Nobody um, was trying to um, hijack any hijack anything. And so Paul preached the gospel to that man. And then they went to that man's house, the jailer's house, and his whole household got saved. So their praises at night, at midnight, uh, did not um, stop them from preaching. It did not stop them from doing anything. And so all of the uh, takeaways that I got from that is that, of course, your assignment is more important than your pain because there are people that the Lord has assigned for us to minister to. And of course, the enemy is always going to try to trap us or to get us to stop or, or get us to be quiet. But that's not going to happen because the Lord has placed something on the inside of us and it's called the boldness of the Holy Ghost. And in the boldness of the Holy Ghost and the Comforter will uh, give us the, the strength to endure what the enemy comes at us with. Because it's, he's always going to be coming with something, always coming with something, never, never, never a time that he's not coming with something, especially if you're uh, preaching the gospel and lives are going to be transformed and lives are going to be saved. So I just wanted to encourage you in that this morning. And uh, the takeaways here are play into people's idiosyncrasies, not to prove a point, but to get past their points of view and get your foot in the door. Do not let it hinder your ministry. Number two, place priority above familiarity to get the word to the people. The message which was delivered to the people was intended to teach them to refrain from certain activities which were detrimental and not a part of their newfound life in Christ. Number three, plans do not always go as planned. 
However, the providence of God will always prevail. It's not always where you want to go, but where we are ordained to be and where we are needed. Being led by the Holy Ghost is more productive than forcing your way into a place where you do not belong. Number four, prophetic visions have paramount over what we desire. Number one, they are above and beyond our personal desires or wants, and they also are of utmost significance and must take precedence over any other priorities or goals. Number five, prayer down by the riverside was the initial thing that they did. And remember to always pray. Lydia's household was saved. The damsel was delivered. The prisoners were loosed. The jailer and his household were, were saved. The guard, rather. So painful to go along with something which is not sensible. But in the long run, God's purpose and will is manifest in your life and God will get his glory. The scripture says, if you suffer with him, if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. So I pray today that wherever the Lord is leading you, that you take courage and that you do exactly what the Lord is calling you to do in your ministry. You may find yourself in unfamiliar places. You may find yourself in an uncomfortable place, but yet and still give God the glory. You may find yourself in a place where it just doesn't seem like it's fair. Now, you know, I've heard of some people that had started doing certain things and they say, oh, well, you know, you, you the way you dress, you got to change the way you dress. Oh, uh, you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, so you got to get baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, well, you got to do this. Oh, you got to do that. Oh, you need to change this. Oh, you need to change that. Overlook their idiosyncrasies and do what you have to do to get to the people of God. Amen. Father, we glorify you today and we bless your holy name. We thank you for the strength that you have given us, Lord, to walk in this world, God, and not be ashamed and not be afraid, but to advance your word and to advance your kingdom. I pray, Father, for everyone that is called to places, Lord, to help and to make a difference in the lives of people. Father, that they will see that it is more important to take the pain and to fulfill their assignment than it is to crawl up in a corner and think that they're not worthy and think that their gift is not needed. I pray, Father, that you would allow them, God, to come forth and to be birthed forth, God, into the realm that you have already ordained for them. We bless you in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful day.